good day and welcome to today's VO webinar. My name is Jimin Seo from VO and your moderator today. Today we're presenting dual wave technology in Silpomex, expanding its indication in Rosacea, Acne and Enlarged Pores. Before introducing today's speaker, I have a housekeeping note. If you have any questions during the speaker's presentation, type them in the question box in your control panel. There will be question and answer session after the presentation. Now I introduce you to today's presenter, Dr. Jinna Yu. She is the consultant dermatologist and director at Dr. Jinna Yu Dermatology in London, an honorary lecturer at University of Manchester in UK. Please welcome Dr. Jinna Yu. Thank you for the introduction and thank you for joining us today. So on today's webinar, I will cover what, de uh, what defines skin quality and the concept of porcelain skin, uh, which um, Koreans are famous for. And then I will focus on the common presentations impacting on skin quality, which are acne, rosacea, and enlarged pores, and how Silphamax dual wave technology can help to address these skin concerns. So skin quality as a concept has been gaining traction in aesthetic field worldwide. And many people admire the, Korean, uh, the famous Korean porcelain skin. And it is a common request when they come to see us in clinic. So porcelain skin means clear, smooth, blemish-free skin, irrespective of skin color. And we mainly need to tackle from three different angles to achieve this, which are visible, topographical, and mechanical. Uh, commonly, uh, the redness, pigmentation, and spots have visible impact on the skin quality. However, also uneven texture caused by enlarged pores can result in how the skin is visualized. So the common presentations we often encounter in our clinic, which impacts on skin quality are acne, rosacea, enlarged pores, hyperpigmentation, and wrinkles. And I will focus on the first three conditions here during this webinar. So acne is one of the commonest dermatologic conditions we see in clinic, uh, and nearly 85% of the teenagers are affected by acne at some point, with one in five acne patients developing scars, which can have a significant psychological and social impact uh, demonstrated in many studies in the past. And in acne, there are increased sebum production, often driven by male hormones or stress, and this makes the skin cells to become more cohesive and do not shed normally onto the skin surface. And as a result, it creates an ideal environment for C acne to overgrow and lead to inflammation. So these are the main targets of currently available treatment modalities for acne vulgaris. So in acne, pharmacological therapies such as topical or oral antibiotics or retinoids are the mainstays of treatment, as you can see on this table taken from the AAD guideline. But they commonly require long-term use and can be associated with significant side effects. Uh, Non-pharmacological treatments have been increasingly used for acne vulgaris independently or in combination with medical therapies, including pulse dye laser, 1450 nanometer diode laser, IPL, and PDT. And for example, PDL works by uh, reducing vascularities and modulating inflammatory process, as well as killing C acne bacteria, whereas 1450 diode uh, laser induced the thermal damage to the sebaceous glands to reduce the sebum production. And another method using the thermal damage to reduce the sebum production is by using RF microneedling. So fractionated RF seems to provide higher volumetric heating and deeper heat diffusion than the ablative and non-ablative lasers. And as a result, it can reduce the sebum production from reduced sebaceous gland activity. And also, it's a thermal effect on the dermis, uh, induce the cellular mediators and growth factors to result in wound healing. Uh, in acne patients or those with oily skin, uh, we often see enlarged pores as well. So pores are the tiny openings around the hair follicles and sweat glands that help gases and liquids move through the surface of your skin. 
Um, sebaceous plants with secret oils are located at around one millimeter depth, which is connected to the hair follicles, whereas sweats are secreted either by the eccrine glands, which have direct opening to the skin, or by the uh, apocrine glands, uh, which are connected to the hair follicles. And these sweat glands are located at around 1.5 to 3 millimeter depths under the skin, and the depth of these glands determine what needle length to choose when we, when, uh, we are using RF microneedling to target these structures. Uh, enlarged pores are caused by three main reasons, which are high sebum excretion in those with acne prone and oily skin, uh, decreased elasticity around the pores due to the aging and increased hair follicle volume. And the pore shapes are different depending on the cause. So in acne and oily skin, the enlarged pores are all shaped and caused by increased sebum production and uh, inflammation, whereas it is U or Y shaped if it is due to the reduced skin elasticity around the pores uh, holding it tight. So the treatment needs to be targeted to address these causes. So the common treatment used in enlarged pools are the topical retinoids, skin microbotox, lasers, either ablative or non-ablative uh, lasers, uh, or, or RF microneedling, but often require more number of sessions to see improvement compared to other skin conditions. Acne rosacea is another common condition uh, which can sometimes be difficult to diagnose in darker skin type, and it can mimic other conditions like acne vulgaris. So rosacea in skin of color is often um, underreported, but the US National Survey showed that the rosacea is not uncommon in skin of color, and it is affecting between 2 to 5% of skin of color population. So it has been suggested that there are lower vascular endothelial function in skin of color, which makes this condition uh, less prevalent in skin of color. So although um, rosacea may have similar clinical presentation to acne, uh, it has very different pathogenesis. Um, so it is a disease with impaired skin barrier, making the skin feel more sensitive, uh, itchy or burning. Also, uh, there is persistent or intermittent diffuse facial erythema due to the vasodilatation, lymphatic dilatation, and angiogenesis, mainly affecting the upper and mid dermis. There is also a link between increased demodex mite on the skin and H. pylori in the gut. And as you know, there are four types of rosacea, and the management is different depending on the different types of rosacea. But energy based devices are predominantly used in the erythematotelensectectic type. So, papular postular type is often managed with medical therapies such as topical or oral antibiotics. And for the facial redness, there are some uh, medical treatments such as topical brimonidine, oral prepronolol, or clonidine, um, but they often are um, poorly tolerated due to the side effects and vascular-based energy devices have a proven record of erythema and vascular reduction. However, the patients uh, with slightly darker fit spectric skin type may not be able to um, be safely treated with IPL, KTP, or PDL due to the close proximity of melanin on the absorption curve to that of oxyhemoglobin. So for these patients, uh, the treatment is mainly limited to NDAC, but RF microneedling could be a, a good alternative treatment, which is not affected by the chromophores. So RF microneedling works by creating controlled micro damage and has become a popular treatment option for skin rejuvenation in any fit spectric skin type, as it is non-chromophore dependent. So when RF is transmitted to the skin tissue, the molecule in the skin creates friction, generating heat at 40 to 60 degrees. And the heat then causes structural changes, uh, denaturation or coagulation of proteins and collagen, which promotes wound healing and stimulates collagen production. Unlike laser, it is not affected by chromophores uh, such as melanin, so uh, safe to use in darker skin as long as you're not generating too much heat. 
Uh, microneedling has similar mechanism, but by creating mechanical damage to the skin. So when you combine these two procedures together in RF microneedling system, it allows RF energy to be delivered deeper into the skin by creating controlled microinjuries. Um, it has been primarily used in skin rejuvenation, tightening and lifting, as well as scar treatment with the conventional RF microneedling devices. Uh, there are many types of RF microneedling devices, and Silphamex is a bipolar RF, which means that the energy is delivered between the two electrodes, whereas monopolar RF involves RF traveling between one electrode to the ground pad attached to the back of the legs, uh, which can potentially pose a threat to other organs. Uh, it uses non-insulated microneedles with nigh effect and uh, uses higher frequency at 2 MHz, which creates narrow range of generated heat, making it more effective than the 1 MHz. So there are several unique technologies which differentiate Silphamex from other RF microneedling devices, including the presence of both continuous and pulse wave, uh, which allows us to treat various skin conditions and its unique needle length with 300 micrometer depth targeting the papillary dermis, where, uh, which is the upper dermis where um, senescent fibroblasts, capillaries, uh, blood vessels and type 3 collagen are present. And there are many clinical trials supporting its efficacy using both continuous and pulse wave technologies. So the microneedles used in RF system are largely divided into non-insulated needles that allow the electric current to flow through the entire needle length and, non uh, and then insulated needle that transmits heat only to the tip of the needles. Compared to the insulated needles, non-insulated needles generate heat over a larger area of the skin, maximizing the therapeutic effect of the targeted tissue but there is a risk of epidermal damage as the heat is transmitted in cylindrical distribution uh, along the entire needle length. However, Silphamex um, has a non-insulated needle, but with nigh effect incorporated into the uh, technology, uh, which reduces the uh, risk of epidermal damage. So the delivery of the um, bipolar RF energy to the skin through the non-insulated microneedles have previously been thought to cause heat between the needles due to the current flowing between the two electrodes and the thermal damage to both epidermis and dermis due to the current flowing along the uh, entire needle length. Uh, um, and then, however, but with the nigh effect, the actual study showed that the, um, the heat was conducted in a teardrop uh, shape due to the high energy density of the needle tip and then different uh, moisture content in the different skin layers. So this nigh effect uh, maximizes the thermal effect at the target tissue with a little or no epidermal damage, uh, which makes it an effective and safe treatment. Uh, another unique feature of Silphamex is that it has dual wave, which can emit continuous wave over a set period of time, causing coagulation, mainly used for lifting, wound healing, or enlarged pores. Whereas pulse wave delivers intermittent energies in multiple pulses, uh, which allows to treat various pigmented or vascular conditions, such as melasma, PIH, and rosacea. Silphamex has four continuous wave and then four uh, pulse wave modes, depending on the pulse duration, expanding its indication to variety of skin concerns. And PW mode is used for inflammatory conditions such as melasma, diffuse erythema, or uh, rosacea and acne. And the shorter pulse duration in PW mode can target the microvasculatures in uh, melasma and rosacea. And CW mode is mainly used for skin rejuvenation and scar treatment. So this in vivo study demonstrated that pulse wave mode using Silphamex selectively destroyed pathogenic vessels without impacting the normal blood vessels morphology and type 4 collagen, which supports the results we see clinically with improved diffuse erythema. 
Another unique feature of CFMX is the needle length targeting 0.3 millimeter depth. So this is where the papillary dermis is located just below the basement membrane at the border between epidermis and dermis. So in papillary dermis, there are senescent fibroblast, capillaries, blood vessels, and type 3 collagen. And targeting this layer can effectively treat melasma, diffuse redness, rosacea, uneven skin tone, and texture. And the effects of Silphamex on acne has been published in several publications. Um, this study looked at 316 moderate to severe acne patients with Fitzpatrick skin type 4 to 5 and 69% of the patients had good to excellent improvement according to physicians' global assessment. Uh, there were nine cases of temporary aggravation of acne or folliculitis, which resolved within three weeks, and this potential side effect needs to be explained to the patient um, during the consent process. And a split phase study on 20 Korean patients with acne uh, compared Silphon X against CO2 fractional laser. And there was no significant difference in physicians' global assessment, but there was longer downtime associated with the CO2 laser. And this, in this publication shared two cases where rosacea and telangiectasia on the nose have improved with the Silphon X. So when treating vascular conditions, uh, the pulse wave mode is used. So PW2 mode delivers a pulse train of four RF waves in 10 milliseconds per pulse, uh, which creates a thermal profile that helps not only coagulating uh, vasculatures, but also uh, may help to minimize the inflammatory components of rosacea by reducing the inflammatory mediators in the skin. Um, in papillary postular um, rosacea um, or acne, PW4 mode is used, and with the darker skin type, the power is lowered, and then looking for mild to moderate erythema at the, as the end point by doing one to two passes. When treating enlarged pores, uh, CW2 mode is used with depth at 1 to 1.5 millimeter to target the sebaceous and sweat glands. And for blackheads, extraction followed by PW4 level 4 parameter can be used. In acne patients, you tend to see a mixture of black and white heads, inflammatory papules uh, and postures, cysts, uh, enlarged pores, and sometimes uh, diffuse facial erythema. And you can target different lesions by altering the parameters using a single device. So frequently, I uh, use Silphamex in combination with other treatments to achieve quick and effective results. And uh, these are some of the examples of combinations I use. So for acne, uh, combination of antibiotics, benzoyl peroxide, face wash, and Silpha monthly can achieve good results. Um, and alternating long pulse 1064 nanometer laser uh, with Silpha every two weeks can also be done. I also uh, combine topical application of skin boosters with uh, Silphan frequently so that it can be absorbed through the microchannels created by microneedling. Um, ASC Plus, uh, which is an exosome based skin booster, has anti inflammatory effect, and I often use it for acne, rosacea, and enlarged pores. Um, there are other skin boosters you can use, such as NCTF for cytokare uh, to give hydration and brightening effect. And the Botox, which was traditionally used as mesotherapy for enlarged pores and redness, can also be applied topically after Silphan X. Um, for enlarged pores, combination with Tulium laser, uh, which targets epidermis down to the papillary dermis, can be combined with Silphum X, which can target deeper dermis to uh, maximize the result uh, to improve the uh, enlarged pores. So I will share some of my cases where I use Silphum X in uh, patients with rosacea, acne, or enlarged pores. So this first case is skin type 1 patient with rosacea. Uh, the most common setting I use in all patients with facial erythema is PW2 level 4. And in this case, I have done one pass to whole face with this setting followed by CW3 level three, one millimeter to target the pores. 
And following three sessions, you can see nice reduction in erythema and papules. And uh, this is the lateral view. And uh, this uh, Vizia uh, image showing the redness shows significant reduction in blood vessels on the nose and medial cheeks. And there has been some general reduction in pores. Um, and this second case is a skin type 3 patient with papular pustular acne and facial erythema. So sometimes um, this type of acne can look like rosacea, but she also had comedons which supported the diagnosis of acne more, uh, rather than rosacea. So with three sessions of Silphamex, PW2 level 4, 0.5 millimeter to the whole face, uh, one pass followed by the second pass with 0.8 millimeter, followed by ASCE plus uh, topical application, you can see some significant improvement on this photo. And this is the lateral view. So although the parameter guide suggests 0.3 millimeter, I tend to use 0.5 millimeter as the minimum depth, um, as I might be losing some needle depth uh, by inadequate contact, etc. And uh, this Vizia image shows nice reduction in redness. And this is another patient with skin type 3 uh, with acne and facial erythema. Uh, I have treated her with PW2 level 4, 0.5 millimeter to the whole face, followed by the spot treatment with PW4 level 4, 1 millimeter over the papules, and then CW2 level 3, um, 1.2 millimeter for acne scars. And you can see nice reduction in diffuse erythema, acne papules, and PIE. Uh, and this is the lateral view. Uh, so from my experience, Silphone is uh, really good at improving this generalized erythema associated with inflammatory conditions. And as a result, uh, it can improve the skin tone and has brightening effect. Uh, this is a skin type 1 patient with severe comedonal and papular postular acne who was not keen on taking isotretinoin. So I have uh, done PW4 level 4, 1 millimeter over the comedons and papules, as well as CW3 level 4, 1.2 millimeter to target the acne scars for uh, five sessions combined with the uh, comedonal extraction. And you can see good improvement with her acne. Um, this is a patient with lentiginous and melasma, and I have combined laser toning every two weeks with Silphum uh, PW2 level 4, 0.5 millimeter every four weeks. And you can see general lightening of the pigments, and also we observed some reduction in the pores as well. So when you're using laser toning on the same day as Silphum, you need to reduce the fluence by 10 to 20% for the laser toning. Uh, this is a male patient who wanted to improve skin texture and enlarged pores. Um, after three sessions of CW2 level 4, 0.5 millimeter to the whole face, followed by increasing the needle length to one millimeter over the pores, you can see more even texture and uh, improved pores over the cheeks and more brightened skin tone. Especially when treating inflammatory conditions with Silphamex, um, I have experienced few uh, cases of flaring their spots, uh, which settled within three to four weeks. So this potential transient side effect needs to be explained before the procedure, and topical steroid can help to settle it quicker if it occurs. So in summary, um, Silphamex dual wave technology allows us to treat a wide range of skin concerns, and especially PW mode has its superior efficacy and safety to treat facial erythema and brightening skin tone in all skin types. Uh, with combination treatment, Silphum X can help to treat challenging chronic conditions such as acne and rosacea. And as, a, as it has dual wave with different modes and the needle length, uh, which we can target, it allows us to improve skin quality in general and makes it as an ideal versatile device to have in clinic. Thank you for listening. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Dr. Yu, for your great presentation. Uh, now we'll take some time for questions. Just a reminder, please be sure to type your questions into the question box in your control panel.
Do you treat in-laws, boys, or nose and chicks with the same parameters or different parameters? Um, so I use the same parameters, but I warn the patients that it will be a little bit more painful over the nose. Um, so for the pores, I mainly use the uh, CW2 um, level 3 or level 4. Um, and then um, prior to the treatment, I always put some numbing cream uh, if I'm going for the like one millimeter or longer needle length. Uh, when you combine Silphomax with a laser treatment, do you use both devices on the same day? And each device you use first? And any precautions when performing combination therapy? So um, there are two main treatments I, I combine sometimes. So uh, I, I combine laser toning on the same day as um, Silphomax. Um, so as you may know, Silphomax can uh, one of the indication for silver max is melasma. Um, so as uh, laser tuning uh, can also treat melasma. So as I mentioned earlier, um, try to reduce the fluence by 10 to 20% uh, when you're doing laser tuning. Uh, and then uh, you can do silver afterwards. Um, and another laser device I combine on the same day is tulium laser. Um, so tulium laser has some the gentle um, non-fractional um, non-ablative uh, function affecting the epidermis down to the papillary dermis, whereas uh, Silphomax can target more deeper dermis. So in combination, I find that uh, it works well for like uh, skin texture or uh, pore improvement, um, etc. Um, do you use different parameters for different skin types? So um, I tend to be a bit more conservative for skin type uh, five and six. So um, you need to reduce the levels mainly. Uh, so by reducing level by one or two, uh, I normally do the first session and then I can gently, uh, gradually increase the level depending on their response and any potential complication. If I'm worried about potential side effects like PIH in uh, darker skin type, I sometimes prescribe hydroquinone um, about one or two weeks before the treatment, and then they can continue uh, after the treatment to reduce the uh, risk of PIH. How many sessions do you normally recommend? So it depends on the uh, on the indications you are trying to treat. So for um, melasma, it will take a lot longer. So I normally say six, uh, more, probably more than six sessions. Uh, whereas uh, with facial erythema, I tend to see results quite quickly, even with one or two sessions. Um, so on average, it's going to be about three to five. Um, but if it if it's but like some uh, indications you see uh, much quicker result like uh, diffuse erythema. Uh, what is time interval between sessions? So normally it's uh, every four weeks if you are treating with deeper needle length. Um, so for example, like 0.8 millimeter or above. Um, so these are mainly used for enlarged pores or acne or uh, roger shape. If I'm using a shorter needle length like 0.5, then I sometimes do it every two weeks. Um, but in general, it's every four weeks I, I recommend. From when can the patient see the results? Um, yeah, so you tend to see results quite quickly with diffuse erythema with one or two sessions. Uh, in last post, you, patients also notice some results with a couple of sessions, but to have the longer lasting results, I normally recommend three to five. Um, also another, um, another um, thing which patients notice quite quickly is the, uh, the very smooth skin texture. So um, it tends to happen um, roughly about like a week after the, each treatment and um, so that, that's one of the motivating factors which uh, makes patients to continue having the treatment because they tend to see some uh, instant brightening and improvement with the skin texture. Do you use medications with a Silphomax treatment for acne? 
Um, I, I do. So I um, I tend to combine with antibiotics and then the benzoyl peroxide face wash. Um, me because it's not chromophore dependent, you can use any type of um, antibiotics. I've tried with uh, very low dose isotretinoin, uh, but I didn't go very deep with the needle length when I was using Silphone. There are a few more questions. Um, how to treat melasma? How to, uh, what is the mechanism? So, um, the mechanism is very complicated. So, um, it's not just about overactive melanocytes, but there are other cells which um, also um, drive the melanocytes to produce more melanin, uh, which is mainly to do with fibroblasts. So um, that's why the CFM X can be a good treatment uh, to address the microenvironment in the um, upper dermis, in the papillary dermis, because it has got this 300 micron depth um, needle. But CFM on its own is not going to cure melasma. Um, so quite often uh, it's best to combine the topical therapies so like hydroquinone or triple combination cream um, at the same time as silphone x and then you can add in laser toning um, if the patient wants to see some quicker result uh, oral tranexamic acid is another great uh, effective treatment uh, you see a good result in more like resistant uh, dermal melasma. So um, I think the key to the success of the melasma treatment is the combination therapy. Okay, and I know Cephamax can help with the scarring on the surface, but what about deeper scar tissue? So it, it depends what kind of scar you're targeting, whether it's like a box scar or roll scar, uh, ice pick scars. So with a combination of, for example, like subsidian in roll scar, and then you do silver X, then you could see some results. But for example, for like ice pick scars, I don't think uh, silver X is the right treatment. Um, so it, it might have to be some ablative laser or TCA uh, peel, um, etc., to to improve it. So it depends on the type of scarring. But most of the patients have a uh, role scar, I think, in general. So um, you could try Cephamex uh, combining with uh, subsidian if, if you want, if you have an acne patient with scarring. Okay, um, that's all for today's webinar. Uh, once again, thank you for joining us. And feel free to reach out if you have any questions or comments via the email or just shown on the last slide. So thank you so much and see you next time.